Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStampar.com. Today I'm going to run you through this adorable little K-cup tote. I learned this from Misty. She's a fellow demonstrator and a sideline of mine. It's a fun little tote that perfectly houses and is perfect for gift giving these little K-cups. Now, I found Junior Mint's Hot Cocoa. I on Amazon I thought perfect for holiday gift giving I'll put in a link I'll try and find a link for you we're gonna need two little K cups for this project and here it is one more time this little tote so I'm making these for craft fairs I am doing my last craft fair on December 9th at from high school in Palatine and um, if you're local in the Chicago area, stop in and see me. But I think this will be the last of my craft fair videos. I'm just finishing up a few of these um, to replenish my stock and thought, why not make a quick video? All right, so the supplies that you need to make this little K-cup tote um, from Stampin' Up! include Painted Harvest, and I'm gonna use the Painted Harvest to make this beautiful Christmas wreath. We'll use the sunflower image. And then I'm using Hang Your Stocking for these little berries. If you've got something else that you can use for that, you can substitute. I've got my Layering Circles Framelit dies, and we're using these for two purposes. We're going to mat the stitched shapes framelits circle second largest one with a scalloped circle from the layering circles and we're also going to use the layering circles to cut the little um, tray here for our tote that holds the k-cups so you need the one and five eighths inch circle for that and then i'm using my mini treat bags thinlets for this little bow on my wreath if you've got another bow die you can substitute but my bow came from mini treat bag thinlets for my handles, I'm using the Pretty Label Punch from Stampin' Up's annual catalog. Love this punch and look at what cute little handles it makes. My Stampin' Pads for this project are Real Red, Wild Wasabi, and Garden Green. And some consumables here for this project include designer series paper from Quilted Christmas and I have got a piece for the front and a piece for the back. So these are, let's see here, four and a quarter by four and three quarters and then I've got another little decorative strip here that is four and a quarter by one and three quarters. So that's to decorate our little tote. My cardstock pieces for the tote are real red and the actual tote itself is seven and a half by 12. And then the little tray inside the tote, I did that in real red also. And that one is seven and three eighths by five and an eighth. Don't worry about getting all the measurements and score lines. You don't have to write it all down. There is a printable project sheet at kitchentablestamper.com. The link is below the video if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're on the blog, the link is always below the video too. You can just click that link and it'll pop up a PDF that you can print and save. All right, let's get the Stampin' Pierce mat and some ink pads and get Stampin'. Okay, so two things for me here. I've got my Whisper White Circle and Wild Wasabi and Garden Green. I like them light to dark and then real red. So we're going to grab the Wild Wasabi and ink up this um, background piece of the sunflower. It's the less detailed part and we're going to stamp that on the Whisper White with Wild Wasabi. See, it already is starting to look like a pretty little Christmas wreath. Now we've got the more detailed piece. We're going to ink that up in garden green. Now when I'm lining this little sunflower up, I look for this um, spot in the center that kind of bulges and I line that up. And then after I check the other points just to make sure, that's when I stamp. Okay, so we've got real red and those little berries, and I found that I was having trouble um, with proportion. So the best way I found to do that was to do 12, and then, I don't know, what is that, like seven, and then four, and stamp those kind of out further, and then at like, I don't know, two, I turn the stamp and stamp towards the inside of the wreath, and then at six, 
towards the inside of the wreath. And then what is this, maybe 10 o'clock? Stamp that one towards the inside of the wreath. So they go in and out and they're evenly spaced. Looks nice when it's done. I've got this seven and three eighths inch side in the Simply Score. And now we're gonna score all the way around at one and a half. So one and a half, four times. And that makes the little tray for our K-Cups. We'll put that aside because we're gonna die cut the holes in just a minute. Now I've got the 12 by seven and a half inch paper. We're gonna put it in the seven and a half inch side first. And then we're gonna score at one and a half, all the way down and at six. Then we'll rotate 90 degrees and we'll score all the way down at four and seven eighths and at seven and an eighth. Now these next two scores only go as far as this horizontal score line here. So we're gonna score at three and a half until we hit that score. And then we're gonna score at eight and a half until we hit that score. Then you'll rotate your cardstock 180 degrees and do the same three and a half and eight and a half score, stopping when you hit that intersecting horizontal line. All right, that's our scoring. Let's get our big shot and die cut. Got my big shot and it's all set up for die cutting. I've got my platform and then the die adapter and a cutting pad. Now we're gonna take the little tray piece that we've scored up and put that in our machine. I've got a one and five eighths inch circle die and we're going to put that right in between the two score lines that we've made and we're gonna cut the first little cutout for our K-cup. It up now we can pop out the circle save that for another project and we're going to move the die over and cut a second little circle so we can put two K cups in this tray now we'll run that one through There it is, that's what you want this piece to look like. All right, let's grab a bone folder and we'll score and assemble our tote. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is work these long ends of our 12 inch piece and then we'll work the horizontal pieces. So all those score lines have been burnished. Let's do the same thing for this little tray. All right, now scissors. We're gonna cut out a few pieces here. So we've got the 12 inch tote where we scored up until the intersecting line in all four corners, there's a rectangle. We wanna cut that out, so you just cut right on the line and then down. Now this can be done with a paper trimmer if you feel more comfortable, but I'm just going to cut all four corners out with my scissors. So that's the piece and you wanna save that for another project. You can die cut, Valentine's Day is coming. Because I've cut those all out and now this is the shape that we have. All right, then the next thing you're gonna do here is continue down and then you're gonna cut a slight angle and cut out the rest of that crease. See? One, two, three more times. All right, so I've got the last little side here and I'm just cutting out the crease. Now, before we do any assembly here, we want to add our designer series paper. I'm gonna use some fast views because this is gonna be handled and I'm gonna go all the way around four sides. And then kind of up on a diagonal. 
and I'm going to adhere this centered in the front panel and then I'm going to do the same and adhere centered in the back panel. Cute is that. All right, then we've got this little gingham piece of Christmas quilt. And I'm going to adhere that across the bottom of the front. Okay, and I've got some paper and I'm just kind of using it up. I'm going to go across the bottom of the back too. But you don't have to go across the bottom of the back with the second piece of designer series paper. I just happen to have it and have it cut. So there's our back. Now, before we assemble, let's lift up the sides here and put the front and the back together. We're going to take our pretty label punch and we're going to go in with all these layers and make sure it's centered and even and then we're going to punch through. Now punching through all these layers is kind of tough so be very careful not to pinch your hands. You can put the punch down on the table and then adhere the necessary pressure. Keep your palm out of the punch. All right, so there's our little handles and because we went through all four layers at one time, they are perfectly equal. Now, let's grab our paper snips again and the little tray. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're going to cut these little scores out. All the way around. So two on this side and then 180 degrees and two on this side. There it is. Okay now let's assemble. I'm gonna put tear and tape two pieces on each of these tabs. Now you're gonna expose the adhesive and bring the side up, line up the edge with the crease, and then rotate and repeat. Now when we bring the side up here, look at how cute that little tote comes together. All right, same thing on the other side. Crazy cute, isn't it? Ugh, think of all the fun little things you could put in there. I'd make a cute little stationary set too with a notepad and some pens, maybe an eraser, teeny little stapler. All right, anyways, that's another idea for another time. So we're gonna add the tray to the inside of our box. So you'll just pinch these little guys down and tuck in and then bring down the long panels. Now this just gets slid right into the box. No needs for adhesive, it'll hold nicely. Then we can add our Junior Mints hot cocoa. How festive is that? That'll warm anybody's winter, right? Now, to decorate the front of our tote, let's make sure I got the front. It, we're going to take our great little um, scallop and, oh, look at that, there's a jack-o'-lantern on the back of my wreath, I did not know that. And then, and here our wreath. I've got a little tiny bow here. How cute is this? Get that glued on there with some multi-purpose liquid glue. You can use a fine tip glue pen here if you like. I'm a little bit nighter with the Tombow, so I'm using the multi-purpose liquid glue. And then pop that right on our wreath. And I'm gonna get a couple of dimensionals here. These are going to get handled, so I want to put couple of dimensionals. Pop our little wreath on there. Oh my goodness, one pattern is cuter than the next. I've got some cherry satin ribbon here. I'm going to just tie these two little handles together. Trim our end. There they are, aren't they? just beautiful. All right, if you've got any questions about this project, if I can help you with Stampin' Up! Supplies, email me, marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. Thanks for watching.